Oh, hello there. I'm Lance Ash, and this week on Rambling, we're going to go rambling through the mm, intricacies of driving a car. Well, our Prius, 2013 Prius, which we liked so much, and which I had recently finally given a name to, has died. Uh, when we got the first Prius, struggling to find a name for it, and um, hold on, I'm gonna fix the mirror here. Hold on. I can't stand mirror to be wrong. Anyway, um, but just recently with the second Prius, I came up, came up with a name for it. Um, I wanted to call it Brother. Because on the Bosch TV show, Bosch is always think, telling people, "Thanks, brother." And I, I named it named the car brother, so that when it got me to where I'm going, I could I could pat the dashboard and say, "Thanks, brother." Anyway, um, we spent six hundred dollars at the Hayward Allen Toyota dealership just so they could look at it. They didn't do anything. They said that, you know, diagnostic is $175, and then if you get the service, we'll knock, we'll take, you know, knock the 75, 175 off. Well, it turns out that they demanded $600 to run some tests. And my wife didn't want to raise a fuss, didn't want to, you know, protest. She just paid it. for nothing. They did nothing. We took it to four separate mechanics and they all said basically it's either irreparable or if we do fix it the same problems is going to keep coming back again and again. The fuel injectors went bad and started shooting oil all up into weird places and ruined the engine. So we had to start shopping around for a new car and the upshot is we, we decided the best thing to do we balanced everything out and unfortunately the best thing to do was to get a new Subaru Crosstrek which is on its route here now they didn't have one on the lot but we ordered one essentially or we bought one that's on route to the Subaru dealership and here's the thing okay um, all right so my wife was dealing with this guy named Mike by email and on phone okay we hadn't met him yet so now this was Friday yeah it was Friday went down to the Subaru place to sign the papers put the put the deposit down on the car and everything walk in the door and they go um, can we help you yeah we're here to see Mike oh, oh Mike Brownlow and immediately bells went off in my head and I'm like oh shit I know that name he's uh, he's talking to these people but he'll be right over here just a second the guy come the guy turns around and I looked at him really closely and I was shook. Um, this guy, there was a music store in town called Music Exchange and he was the manager. And the difference in the way he looked was shocking. Because he used to have long brown hair, now he's got short gray hair and wears glasses now. So anyway, I said, "Are you the Mike Brownlow that used to manage the music store?" Yeah, I said, "I bought my red SG from you in 1990." Oh my God! No, actually, it might have been 91. Now that I think about it, yeah. Because I turned 
21. Yeah, it would have been 91. Anyway, um, so, um, uh, he told me, yeah, I had to have, I had to finally make a career change because, uh, you know, life moves on and the pressures of life demand that you make certain changes. And I told him basically the same thing. Back then I wanted to be a rock star and I wanted to get together a band and all this shit and it just didn't materialize. Very strange. So, um, now there's all this second guessing. Oh no, we bought a new car. What are we going to do? We got to cobble together the money. We got to start pinching our pennies again. <sighs> Look, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm, you know, worrying because you're not able to indulge in fancy products from the grocery store. I, I just think that's silly. This was the best deal from what we could gather. Anyway, um, so, I was wrong. Trump has finally been indicted. Now, whether he'll be found guilty or whether he'll actually be punished in any way, I think is... Well, it's totally unknown. I was going to say it's 50-50, but who knows. And at this point, who cares? And the funny thing is, all these people who have been so baffled as to the peculiarly rabid nature of the GOP base's devotion to Trump, um, are going to be equally baffled when all that love and loyalty is immediately transferred to the next nominee. Because let's just say that DeSantis gets the nomination, okay? All that shit, all that praise and glorification and, and, and the anointing of God and all that will immediately turn around and, and be heaped upon his head. Because it's not, I mean, Trump, there is an unusual aspect to his boisterous demagoguery. But um, it's more the nature of how fundamentalist Christians see the Republican Party. They see the Republican Party as the official party of Jesus. And so therefore, whomever the party picks as its presidential nominee has been automatically, of course, chosen by God. And therefore, who are we to say anything bad about that person? Who are we to defy that person's commands? or to deny them that our love. Oh, had a three-day weekend. Got a lot of stuff done, amazingly, for all the other chores we had to do. I'm going through a, a bad phase with my painting. Um, painting is always difficult. It's always um, a headache. It really should be fun, but I've got such, I've developed such high standards over the years that now I feel like I have to 
maintain that and it is a bit of a headache but I did get some painting done I really should just approach it as more fun and if it comes out sloppy and shitty just you know so what I look back at some of the older paintings and I and I just wonder how did I do that do that but anyway um, my father-in-law gave us the first season of the new Perry Mason and the first three episodes three or four episodes of the second season so finished watching all of those this weekend and um, now got to try to find a way to watch the rest of the second season. Um, that show and some recent music that my wife shared with me and some, and some recent stuff that I've discovered really puts the lie to this notion that people have that well, today's music is no good, and today's entertainment options are just no good. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. I guarantee you that the real reason that John Cleese is doing is re... What? It's a comic book head. Hold on. Anyway, the real reason that Junkless is bringing Faulty Towers back is because he wants to make a statement against woke comedy. I guarantee you. It's going to be a bunch of irritating shit. Basil will pause to deliver an editorial every episode. really well today. There's a scene on um, Perry Mason where um, he takes his son to the movies and the movie is King Kong. And my wife and I both said at the same time, oh that's right, it's 1933. That's when it first came out. And the little boy is just wide-eyed, you know, watching it. Because back then, my God, that would have been like watching Star Wars. This car, this is, I'm driving my dad's Prius tonight, and this car is, it feels the same, or well, not the same, but it feel, feels like similar to the way the Prius was driving, my Prius was driving before the end. That sort of spluttering thing. You know, these assholes at, at the Toyota dealership said, uh, probably a bad head gasket and cost about five grand. And I, I, I'm like, no, um, we'll just have to get a second opinion. Anyway, I started driving it. And I said, you know, this car is driving exactly the way um, cars I've had in the past have driven when it's a bad fuel filter, clogged fuel line, bad fuel um, pump. And sure enough, it was the fuel injectors. I'll tell you something else happened this weekend. I, I've been, you know, as longtime listeners of, the, of my uh, video efforts know, I, I've got this big kick been going on for a long time now about revisiting my 1970s childhood. And you know, really, it's not just 1970s. It's, it's also the hangover of well, the remainders of the 70s that, that stuck around into the early 80s. And it's also the remainders of the 60s that were still lingering when I was a little kid, 74 and so, and so forth. Anyway, um, one of the places we took the car to was this place called Japanese Motor Works. And I'd never been there. Uh, pull up and the sign says uh, in business since 1977 and I thought 
wow. Can you imagine this place as a startup in Athens in 1977, to, specifically to deal with Japanese cars? Little bitty business. Kind of makes me think of uh, the hippies who were working on um, Star Wars in the early months of the production, you know, like a little secret hippie laboratory where they're putting together plastic models and stuff. But anyway, so I got to thinking about this um, place where I got my uh, braces, this orthodontist office, and uh, hadn't been there since uh, probably 85 or 86. Probably 85. Anyway, um, the place, the, the building had this sort of shed structure type um, design. And uh, I remember they didn't have, um, you know, like when you go to the dentist, they have. Um, individual rooms where they where they clean your teeth and so forth. At the orthodontist, it was this one great big room with all the chairs together in the room. And um, uh, I remember being on one of the chairs reclined and they were playing um, a Billy Joel song. So anyway, I wanted to go over there and see if I could get a picture of the place. So Saturday, I knew they wouldn't be open, so I could probably peek through the windows with impunity. And um, so we went over there, and I snuck around the back, and they had like a little, there was like a little enclosed, little tiny enclosed garden space with a door. And the door was left ajar, and I went through a great big window where you could peer right into the room where all those chairs are at. And it really kind of freaked me out. I got, I put my camera up to the glass and got as best a picture I could get. Um, Cause it, I don't know, it's hard to describe. It had these wooden, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Anyway, the the ceiling's like a great big pointed ceiling, but the but. I mean, the roof is, but the, the ceiling is partially just wooden beams intersecting. It's very dated looking. Anyway, so I, uh, I, don't, I didn't, didn't want to poke around too long. I should have stood there and looked around a good bit more. The orthodontist's name was Dr. Morang, and he got mad at me on the last time I saw him because they had removed my braces, but he still wanted me to keep wearing this retainer. And he glued this metal bar on the inside of my back teeth, and I had to wear this, this retainer. Well, I basically, and he wanted me to come in every so often so he could check the fit of the retainer. Well, I just basically, basically stopped wearing it. So, um, every time I had an appointment to go over there, I would forget to bring it because I wasn't in the habit of having it with me. So I go in to see him, don't have the retainer. Well, okay, we'll bring it next time. Go in to see him, don't have the retainer. Okay, bring it next time. So the third time this happens, he got all mad and threw up his hand and said, well, there's nothing I can do for you then. So I kind of I kind of got up from the chair like, oh. Okay, well, to hell with you then. And I never came back. And I got, I went home, and I got a butter knife, and I pried the metal bar out that they had glued behind the teeth, and it had these spots of where the glue was on the back of the teeth for years, until finally I went to the went to a dentist again, and they um, buffed the glue off. And I always remember him because he always talked about his Porsche. And people ask him, how's the Porsche doing? Oh, it's great. 
this made me kind of sick. Alright, well, I, anyway, I got a Subaru.